So I think that's really, really important. And then talk about how hard that is. And, and say, look, this is really difficult. I, I'm, I'm going to acknowledge how hard this is. For me to put that post on, 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 on Facebook in an influencer group run by a guy like Brendan Burchard, for me to actually ask for help is, is difficult. But this is what happened. It wasn't even in my body, to be honest. I wasn't there. Had I been thinking, I wouldn't have posted it. Yeah. Oh, see, this is important. Oh, that's, a, that's a video I want you to put together. Um, so what I want you to do is just just go through that. So we're going to do one like right now. So you've got no time to rehearse or practice. So what I want you to do right now is just <laughs> look like that. It doesn't matter. Like, seriously, <laughs> you, whatever makes you feel comfortable, so long as you're on the screen. All right. So here we go. Hi everyone, this is Yena, and she's going to introduce herself and let you know why she's on this course. Okay. Hello. Um, I was going to say my name's Yena, but Dion's covered that. I am here because I got to a point in my life, in my journey, that there was no other there was no other option, there was no other step, there was no other direction for me to go but ask for help. And, and my heart's pounding at the minute. It was really, really hard. Um, and it came, it came in my head a few days before, maybe I should post something on the Facebook group, but straight away it's just like no I'm a lurker I just ghost and I look and I never post and I like maybe I'll like something but I don't even ask friends and family for for help never mind a, a group full of thousands of strangers but I just I was just so stuck on my post I put my energy felt sick um and there's just I don't know what to do with that my, I've spent 14 years in personal development and I have like answers for everything. I have conversations with myself. I, I'm so self-aware, I figure figure stuff out myself. I mean, just kind of been my self-coaching for so long that it's just been me sorting it out. Maybe I do it in short space of time or a long space of time. But this time I just had no, my toolbox was just, there was nothing in there for me to use. So yeah, I, I reached out on the post um, on the Facebook group and in the moment that I did it, I, I felt compelled to do it there and then. I didn't have much time to think, um, it's almost like I was taken over, it's like it was it was this or, or stay, stay where I was and just be stagnant, stuck and chasing my tail for however long, but I'm not doing that, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a son to provide for, so I reached out for help and... Here I am. Talk to us about but when I when I connected with you and you told me the story of you leaving and how old your son was when you made that choice. Can you just tell us that situation and and that decision? Because to me that's the catalyst, right? I I already knew that this the, the, his dad was, wasn't the type of person that I wanted to be with um, but when I found out I was pregnant I, I told him um, it still stands um, but this because this is how I want to live my life I don't want to live a lifestyle the way that you live your life and he said no I want the same things as you and you know by the time he comes I won't be like taking like drugs or whatever and I was like, okay, I'll give you a chance because you know, you're the dad. Um, but just know that I'm not telling you how to be. I'm telling you what I want and that's not gonna change. The, this is like a deal, this is deal breaker. Like, I'm not raising a child with somebody that does what you do. And he assured me that, you know, by the time he come along, things would have changed, but obviously they didn't. Um, and I had, a, I had a quite a traumatic labor um, and I couldn't, I couldn't really sit for about six weeks. So I needed to heal. And during that time, I just, he, he kind of got worse. But in my head, I was like, right, as soon as I'm better, then as soon as I'm better, I'm gonna go. But I didn't know where I was gonna go. And a friend of mine was like, you can come and stay with me. 
So yeah, after my friend said come to hers and I just thought I can't, I, d I just didn't want to get used to the help because he was really helpful with he did the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, everything. And I thought this could get e comfy really easy and I could set myself and my morals and my principles and values aside. Um, so as soon as I was well enough to sit, which is at two months, um, I was just like, you, you haven't changed. And he's just like, no, no, give me a week. <laughs> it's like, you haven't changed in a year. I'm not giving you a week. And I kind of thought maybe he will fight for his son and he didn't. He just, it's two years later and he still thinks I'm being stubborn. He, he, st he still thinks that I'm going to come round and be like, oh, sorry. But yeah, no. I just, I wasn't even thinking about myself. I was still in pain. I was still exhausted. I mean, I needed the help that he was giving me, but it was just Arlo, 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 one track mind. It was just Arlo and I need to, the quicker I get set up for myself, the quicker I get out, the quicker I can, yes, it's going to be even more painful for me to go now, but in the long run, it's going to be easier. So yeah, that's why I went. And how do you keep your your self love for yourself through all of this? Because th there's other things now, like you and I, man, I've, I've been broke, like broke, broke, and the the shame and embarrassment was the hardest thing for me, because I'm known as as this guy, and and any of the crappiest situations, I'm a go to guy all the time. But it's crisis or this is going on or anything that someone's scared of, I I can go there. But something really interesting happens when your financial resources are taken away or you make stupid decisions like I did and you lose it. And for me, I remember, I always remember the figure, $3.13. I, I knew I had $3.13. Like people say, being broke's the worst. I'm like, well, having just a little bit, I think it's like, it can sometimes screw you a little bit more. Because <laughs> I remember meeting someone that wanted to catch up for a coffee because they were worried about me. They wanted to get, and I, and I'm fine now, you're putting on the mask and everything else. And they're like, hey, bro, you want a coffee? I said, oh, no, I'm good, thanks, I'm just gonna drink some water made up some bullshit excuse because I knew I had $3.13, which means I could not have afforded to buy the next round of coffee. And that was the embarrassment, the shame was the hardest thing for me to deal with and still have self-respect for myself when I looked in the mirror. How do you do that? Because I know there's a lot of people watching this right now. It's like, hey man, good on you sister for, you know, making the right decision for your kid. And then another person's situation is like, fuck that, I ain't doing that. If I'm going to end up broke, I'd rather stay with this idiot <laughs> doing all the cooking, cleaning the washing than <laughs> go out here and, and be broke. You know, like, that's the choice, right? And you and I both have friends who have settled and have compromised or sold out on values purely for safety. And I'm not judging because that's human nature. What holds you personally in that self-love state that you still have for yourself in the situation that you are now with, you know, and... and no, I'm just being honest here. A lot of time, you don't have enough money for a haircut, but you got food, Arlo's got food, and you got a roof over your head. How, how do you keep the self-love without that shame and embarrassment flipping and banging you over the head? Because it knocked me over. 